Hi everyone, final video on AC electronics and I want to introduce the idea of a resonance and a resonance circuit. And so here we've got our basic RCL circuit, series circuit, resistor, capacitor, and inductor. And the idea here is that um, we want to basically look at how this circuit reacts to different frequencies. So if you remember the impedance formula had frequency in it because the impedance is driven by the reactance, the reactance is driven by frequency. So uh, at different frequencies, the circuit's going to do different things. So, um, you know, because the, the components are in series with one another, they share the same current, but different voltage drops are going to occur, okay? And those voltage drops are dependent on the relationship between the resistance and the reactances. And what happens is that energy flows from the source to the resistor into heat, flows into the capacitor to the electric field, flows through the inductor to the magnetic field. <clears throat> now, one thing to remember is those phasor diagrams. So when the capacitor is feeding the electric field, the magnetic field is feeding the inductor. They're opposed to one another. They go in opposite directions like this. So, you know, you, you have energy going out, but then energy is coming in to the inductor. Now, how much energy? That's going to be associated with the, the reactance, which is driven by frequency. So, for small frequencies, the, uh, the capacitor is going to have a very large reactance. For small frequencies, the inductor is going to have a small reactance. And so, you know, the inductor is going to require a small amount of energy, the capacitor is going to require a large amount of energy, and vice versa. So, but there's a particular point, or a particular frequency, at which those magnitudes, that magnitude of energy transfer will be the same. And that's a magic frequency because Essentially what happens is the energy going out is fed by the energy coming in. These two components at the resonant frequency, the two components feed one another completely. And as a consequence, they don't need to be fed from the source. They kind of join in a happy little marriage there. Which means that all the energy in the circuit flows through the resistor, we get a maximum amount of current flow in that case. We don't need any energy to feed these components at that moment, or at that frequency. And so, you know, we have basically um, the, the, the source um, can allow a maximum amount of current to flow, and we get a maximum power consumption that occurs. Now, the impedance, if we were to plot it as a function of uh, frequency, it's a U-shape. It's got a bottom. That trough is this resonant frequency I'm talking about. If we were to plot the power consumed, however, we get a picture that looks like this. It, you know, the current spikes at that resonant frequency, and because we get a current spike, we'll also get a power spike in this case. And so, the you know, it, uh, all of a sudden the, the circuit, you know, it's you're tweaking the frequency, all of a sudden the circuit starts to just gobble up energy because there's no reactance anymore. And so it's just, it's, it's as if these elements were not there and there's just the resistor. And so you get this spike, this resonant frequency, um, and the where that occurs is given by this formula here. And it's kind of interesting, the resistor, because it's not about the resistor, it's about these two feeding one another, getting those reactances to equal one another. The, when the reactances are equal to one another, if I plug in the definition of the reactances, solve for F, this is the formula I get. So this is the resonant frequency and um, is used in all sorts of situations. For example, <laughs> there goes my slide. But for example, we see that in um, an AC radio. Uh, 